Hi, I'm Teresa Elling. Welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm a wife and mom of six grown children, and I've been a professional organizer for over 15 years. Today, I'm going to show you the three steps for organizing any space, decluttering, reorganizing, and labeling. And I'm going to apply those to my linen closet. My closet has been a mess for some time. We've had kids coming and going, we've had a lot of change, and it's also just been in need of a good declutter for quite a while. I am slowly working towards having less stuff. It takes time and it's removing a lot of layers, layer by layer, like an onion. So today I will show you the process I went through and I'm also going to give you my best closet tip for folding sheets. And if you've seen the one where you put your sheets in a pillowcase, it's not that. This one is so much better and easier to use. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified each time a video is uploaded. Also, please like or dislike the video to give me some feedback. And I would love to hear your own linen closet hacks. What tips do you use? What practical ways do you keep track of all of your sheets and towels and things that we normally keep in a linen closet? I would really love to hear from you. So I had an interesting thing happen to me in the filming of this segment. I had done the before videos and you could see my disaster of a closet. And then I took everything out and I began to sort. I sorted it in my piles like you'll see. I decided that I needed some new baskets. So I ran to Target with my brand new phone and looked at the measurements, set it down, began measuring bins, deciding what I needed, put my stuff in my cart, walked away. A couple minutes later, realized I didn't have my phone. So I came right back, but it was gone. And every attempt to recover it has come to nothing. And so I did end up buying a new phone yesterday so that I could finish filming. But unfortunately, all of that footage of my before is gone. And I'm really bummed that I can't show that to you because it really was a mess, trust me. A lot of the things that were folded on the shelves were neatly folded, but crammed in, filling the entire shelf. My goal is to have about 75% capacity, maybe 80%. You have to leave some margin. You've got to leave some room for when you bring in something new, it's gotta have a place just to even sit while you're deciding where that's gonna go. If you are full to the max, there is no breathing room at all. So keep that in mind when you're decorating or reorganizing any space. I just wanna remind you that the first thing I did was completely empty my linen closet. I took everything out, put it in my bedroom, which is right next to it, and then I began to sort. So let's go to the sorting portion. After emptying your space, you want to label the different categories. This is things that need to be put away or they need to go elsewhere in the house. I've got some outdoor pillows that are gonna go in my garage, things that need to be returned to my daughter. Um, I've got clothes for my two grandsons when they come to visit. And I realized that I have a dresser at the top of our stair landing that's empty. So I'm actually going to move those into there for the boys. I'm also moving light bulbs because I thought it was a great idea to have them for changing a light bulb upstairs. But in the three years we've lived here, I've never gone into this closet for a light bulb. So I'm just gonna combine them with the ones that are in my laundry room. And I think that'll be a better system. And then starting over here, this is my donate pile, which I've got a lot of stuff here. And all these things that I'm donating and then this is my keep pile and it's like three times the size of the donate pile there's a lot of stuff here and i already put all my christmas pillows back into the closet but i'm gonna go through a few things and tell you how i sorted the sorting process is key to organizing anything being able to go through your items, pick up each thing one at a time and evaluate, does this spark joy? Does this add to my life? Do I need this? Have I used it in the last year? These are just a few questions you'll wanna ask. Really,
usually the things that are difficult to let go, we usually know we're not using it, we don't need it, but there's something in us that makes us hang on to these things. I address some of those issues in my decluttering the closet video, but now we're on to linens. One of the first things I found was this schoolhouse quilt that I made for one of my daughters. And in looking at it, I realized I was saving it thinking that maybe it would be used again for one of my grandkids, but it has several stains on it. And so it probably will never be used as a wall hanging again. And I talked to my daughter about it and we both agreed that we could let it go. We can take a picture of it, remember it, but it isn't something that we need to save, even though I made it. Um, now you could, if you wanted to put this in a keepsake box and say, this is important and I want to save it, absolutely do that. But you have to have a limit on what you're keeping as an important memory. We decided to let this one go and maybe someone else will be able to use it. I love to find linens when thrifting and going to yard sales, especially things with lace, cut work, crocheted edges. And I've had these two matching pillowcases for a while. I also had, these are the shams, but I have two quilts that are under this pile. And they're just beautiful white on white quilting. And I, I always imagined having like my girls two in a room with two twin beds with these on them. And it was a lovely idea, but it never happened. And my children are all grown now, so it's not going to happen. Our guest rooms now have queen and king beds in them. So it's time for those to find another home. A couple things I wanna show you that I really love. If you tend to run cold in the winter and you like cozy things, these are amazing. My husband bought these polar fleece sheets for me and I thought they would maybe be too hot. They're incredible. They are just so soft and so comfortable and I almost don't want to give them up at the end of the season. We just took them off of our bed because it's warming up, but this is an absolute keep for me. And our flannel sheets, those can go because polar fleece forever. I'll link in the description below where you can get some of these. The other thing I absolutely can't do without are pillow covers. Everyone knows we sleep on our pillows, we drool on our pillows, and they can get a little bit gross. These pillow covers zip right over the pillow, and then you put your pillowcase on over that. And it's just an added layer of protection for your pillow. You might change your pillowcase, you know, every time you change your sheets and wash those, but at least once a year, you can take these covers off and wash them thoroughly and you it just is so much easier to keep your pillows clean with a pillow cover so i highly recommend those as soon as you've finished clearing everything out you can clean all of your shelves decide if you want to repaint i notice these stains on the back walls but i'm not going to repaint at this point those are going to get covered up with my stuff so i really don't care I want to show you a little trick that I use. Normally I have a cardboard template, but honestly, I think I got rid of it because I don't need it anymore. But this is really helpful. Let's say that you're folding sheets that are this wide. You have all of this wasted shelf space. So if it's possible for you to fold and have things coming out farther, you utilize the space a little better. So I'm going to use this as a template to show you how to fold sheets neatly. I'm going to show you how to fold a set of sheets so that they sit nicely on your linen shelves, just like this. It's really easy to grab this. And this is an entire set. This is a queen set of sheets and I have my template that I used in the closet so I know the depth of my shelf and an approximate width. First, I'm going to check pillowcases and fold it in half. They're too big. So we'll have to fold those in half again. So quarters on the pillowcases. And then the dreaded fitted sheet. I know a lot of people really struggle with folding these and end up just rolling them in a ball and shoving them in a linen closet. Uh, but I'm going to show you a way that gives you the nicest, flattest fold possible. On your four corners, it's the only place there's a seam. 
in the sheet and you can check it from the inside. So I'm going to have right side out and directly across, I'm gonna find the other pocket and that one is gonna be inside out. So that when I insert here, find the peak that's lined up wrong sides together. Come on over to the other side, same thing. Find your seam, the pocket, that point is what you need. Find it again across the way and match up the corners. Once they're matched up, you can lay your sheet out so that the bottom is straight and you're gonna fold over the top so that the top is fairly straight across. And of course you will have some wrinkles here, that's fine. And then on the left side, you're gonna bring in this sheet just enough to get another flat edge. And on this side, kind of lift and move it. And this won't sit completely flat and kind of tuck parts of it under. The goal is to get, tuck this under if it's bothering me, to get a nice rectangle. Once you do that, you can fold in. For these, I'm gonna do thirds. And from there, fold in half. So that's fairly flat for a fitted sheet. Lastly is the flat sheet, which is the easiest. I folded it into fourths, half and then half again. And really what you have to do, at this point I can fold my laundry pretty easy without a template, but you'll probably have to play with it for a while until you know what you need for your sheets. If I fold this in half again, so from a fourth to a half, you can see that it's way too big for this template. If I fold it in half again, now it's too small. So I'm gonna try for thirds. And again, it won't be this complicated once you know your sheets and what you need and the sizes, this is a queen. So thirds, we're gonna go with that and that's the closest. Now, for this part, I'm gonna go double the depth of my closet shelves. So I'm gonna go two times here, and I'm gonna fold this over so that I have that double length that I want. And now, all I have to do is put my fitted sheet here, my two pillowcases, and I fold this over, and I've got a full set of sheets that are gonna sit flat. They're easy to stack on a shelf, very easy to grab what you need. So this is an easy way to fold. I hope you'll give it a try. Here is the after photo. This is what my closet looks like now, and it is such an improvement. I'm gonna go over a little bit slower and give you some detail about some of the decisions that I made for this closet. You can see here that I've labeled twin, queen, king. I also have some extra guest linens that I keep up on the top. This enables anyone to put something away and know where it belongs. Also a key for me, <laughs> we've lived here three years and I finally just put up hooks for my duster. I use a feather duster when dusting upstairs and I keep a separate one downstairs. And also hanging one of my seasonal wreaths, which has just been laying down on a shelf and it kept getting hit and pieces broken off. So this is a much better solution. At the top here, I have my great grandmother's quilts that I will keep forever and hopefully pass those down. Extra pillows, you can see here that I have labeled these containers. And again, if you don't have them labeled, you don't know what's in there. And when you go to put something away and you have a container not labeled, you can stick anything in there. So labels keep things structured, organized, and enables you to follow up and keep your system in place. Towels, I will say that my personal towels are in my bathroom and I keep them there. 
Same with the kids. Their towels are in their bathrooms. And these are guest towels. A really great tip for sheets, if you don't have a big, this is a huge closet. Again, the biggest closet I've ever had. Normally I've had a very small, just a few shelves. And what I have done for my kids in the past, if we've had a really small closet, I only allow them to have two sets of sheets. I have a plain cotton and a winter flannel. And so the sheets that are not being used, you can lay out flat and actually put between the box spring and mattress. And it's an easy place to store them flat and they don't get in the way at all. Okay, what else do we have going here? These are the new baskets that I bought at Target. These are my very expensive baskets since I had to buy a new phone. Projects, I currently have, I have not put up family photos since we moved here, I'm ashamed to say, but this is my next project. And so I've collected all the frames, all the family photos. This is coming up. This is my gift spot whenever I buy a gift for someone ahead of time. And at Christmas, we have extra space so we can store Christmas gifts in here as well. And these are for my guest room that right now, some of my kids are staying in there. You can see I have a ton of Christmas pillows and that's because we have uh, seating the, the dining bench in my dining room and it takes a lot of pillows to make it comfortable for people to sit there. So I have quite a few. And the rest of my Christmas stuff is in the garage, but I do not trust the mice with my pillows and my linens. So they stay in here so I know that they can be safe. So seasonal decor, again, some more blank space for projects. I also have large frames pictures that I haven't put up yet. I still haven't put anything over my bed in my bedroom and I'm waiting to do that. So this is the spot where that goes as, as well as the air filters. The last thing you'll see here is a large basket on the floor that has my grandkids bedding. Whenever they come to visit, it's got kids sleeping bags, kid blankets, all the things that they need are right here. I also have a couple of bins with various containers, baskets, things that I tend to use quite a bit actually. When I need a basket just the right size, maybe in the kitchen, I know I can come up here and usually find what I need. It's also a backup system for clients. Sometimes I'll think I have the exact size container I need at home and I can come here and grab it. So I normally don't recommend that you hang on to extra things just in case you might need them. But in this situation, I actually use these things frequently. So it's worth it to dedicate some space for them. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, you can do this in your own home. Just remove everything from your space. Sort through, touch each item to make a decision. And when you have less, that's the key to reorganizing. Having less stuff means that you can see what you have and don't forget to label. Thanks for joining me today on The Peaceful Home.